Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be covering the entirety of Rani the Witch's questline to help you get the oh so amazing Dark Moon Greatsword along with Blythe's full armor set and weapon and many other very juicy rewards along the way. As you probably know, if you've watched the Things You Missed series, I missed Rani's questline throughout that particular playthrough. So I've just blitzed through the game from scratch so that I could record all this footage for you. And I was surprisingly shocked how early on in the game you can do most of this. There is some really challenging boss fights along the way, so you are going to need to be damn good at the game or need some help if you do want to do this as early as I did. But it is possible. I've literally only beaten two main bosses by this point and I finished her quest line. So let's get straight into it, starting with the first time that you meet her at this church in Limgrave. Rani will only appear to you here once you have collected Torrent. At this point, you want to teleport back to the church and she'll be there to give you the spirit calling bell and the lone wolf ashes. Don't worry if you miss her at this point. It doesn't lock you out of the rest of the quest line. And it also doesn't lock you out of these ashes and the spirit calling bell. They will be purchasable from the twin maiden husks in the round table hold if you miss this initial introduction. The next time we meet her isn't going to be until quite a lot further on in the playthrough, once we've completed Caria Manor and defeated Royal Knight Loretta. So I'll meet you in the plateau out the back, called the Three Sisters. Once you're here, just start running to the southwest, towards the tower over in the distance that I'll mark on the map in a second. As you're running over here, be careful of the giant dragon that will run around to avoid. And when you get to Rani's Rise, just like we always do with these towers, head to the top. But unlike the usual memory stone that we'd get, Rani is waiting for us. Speak to her and you can offer your service, and then she will ask you to go and greet her three advisors below, Blythe, E.G. and Celebus. So we'll quickly go and do that, and then we'll move into the next section of this guide. I'll just show you a very quick glimpse of me speaking to each of the three companions. Once you've finished speaking to them, head back upstairs and tell Rani that you've done so. She'll then let you know that she's going to go to sleep whilst you carry on questing for her. But the next thing we need to do is go and meet Blythe in the Shifra River. Now that we're here at the Shifra Riverbank, as I'm making my way over to Blythe, I just wanted to quickly let you know that there is more to Blythe's questline before you even start Rani's questline that you can go and do should you wish but it's not integral to this quest. He will still be here, even if you haven't done it. But to find out about the start of Blythe's questline, including the bonus reward that he gives you for beating Darrowill, and how he ties in with the merchant Carle, go and watch my Things You Missed in Limgrave video, and I'll talk you through it in full there. Now that we're here, Blythe will let you know that he is struggling to get to Nokron, which is where we need to be. So he asks you to go and speak to Celebus to see if he can help. So teleport back to Rani's Rise, and from here you want to head to the southeast towards Celevis's Rise. Celevis will also talk to you about Nefeli and give you a potion as part of his own questline, but we'll gloss over that for now and revisit that in another video. For now, just ask him about Nokron, and he will direct you to Selen and give you an introduction letter. Also, while we're here, you can run to the top of his tower and get yourself a memory stone if you want. Then I'll meet you in Limgrave and we'll go and speak to Sorceress Selen. You'll meet Selen just here in the Waypoint Ruin Cellar, and once you speak to her, you can show her the letter of introduction. She advises you that General Radan is the force stopping the stars, and if he was to die, they would continue their movements, which would then allow Rani's destiny to continue. So let's go back and give Blythe the kind of good news, and then the next thing we need to do is head to Redmain Castle and defeat General Radan. Also, if you want to know more about Selen, we've already covered her questline in another video, so you can go and check that out as well if you wish. But now, I'll meet you in Redmain Castle. If you haven't been here and you're not sure how to get here, I have done full guides, full things you missed videos on Kaelid and Redmain Castle that will help you out. And then I can meet you here in the plaza where you can speak to both Blythe and Alexander. And you can also get the polite bow emote from one of the NPCs here. Once you're done, head on up and speak to Jeren, and let him know that you are prepared, and you're as ready as you'll ever be. I'll leave this awesome cutscene to play out, 
to give you a little bit of Radan's backstory. His whole story is heartbreaking, and I may cover that in another video if people want me to. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. From the inside, by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of four friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. Now that that's done, the Radan Festival can begin. Make sure you don't interrupt Jaren's dialogue, and you'll also get the heartening cry emote. Then we can head into the building behind him, take the exit to the right, head down the lift, and travel to Radan's boss arena using this portal. He can be an insanely challenging boss fight, especially if you're a purist who doesn't like using summons, but this boss fight is designed for summons. Do not feel bad using them. As you see me doing here, once you've dodged his initial few arrows, you basically just want to run around grabbing every single summon on the field and make this a 10v1 because he is that powerful. So this is a very, very long fight in what is probably going to be a very long video. So I'll skip through most of it. And then finally, once you and all of your companions have taken him down, you'll get Radan's Great Rune and the Remembrance of the Star Scourge. And then this very cool, albeit fairly short cutscene will play out. And now, if you wish, you can go and exhaust the dialogue of Blythe and Alexander. And Blythe now wishes to meet you in Nokron, where Rani's fate will be decided. So, let's go. You can get to Nokron by heading down the huge crater that has been created to the west of Fort Height that I'm showing you just here. Again, if you want a full tutorial, go and watch the things you missed on Nokron. I will show you a full step-by-step -step there. But for now, I meet you at the Knight's Sacred Ground Grace site, just at the other end of the area where there was loads and loads of Silver Tears. So now we're going to head up these stairs into this building and open a previously inaccessible chest. This will grant us access to the Finger Slayer Blade and a Great Ghost Glove Wart. So now that we're done here, teleport back to Rani's Rise and let her know that you've got the hidden treasure of Nokron. She will thank you with yet another task. Thanks Rani, great. Just what I wanted, more work to do in the form of the Karian Inverted Statue. This is in Eastern Leonia. It's this building I've marked on the map just here, so I'll meet you there. As soon as you get inside the Karian Study Hall, you can interact with this table and examine the pedestal. Here you will put the inverted statue, which will literally flip the temple upside down. So carefully drop down into the upside down lift, jump up onto the top, which is now the bottom of the doorway. Oh, this is going to be a really confusing area to describe to you. Kill the finger creepers that are just here, and then just off in the distance, you'll see Preceptor Miriam. This is an incredibly annoying enemy who has crazy amounts of health, is very good at dodging, and will just spam spell after spell after spell at you. So I'll skip most of this fight because it's me just trying to cheese them to death with lots of fire arrows. At around half health, Miriam sods off, so we're going to start working our way around the edge and start to fight in melee. After we've dealt with all the finger creepers, we can then get off a few really solid hits with our swords and Miriam will teleport again even further away. Now that she's teleported down here, she's even more annoying to get to. So we're going to hop off the ledge and start very carefully working our way along this balcony where we can loot the Mask of Confidence. And now that that mask has given me the confidence... See what I did there? <laughs> to continue the fight, we're going to charge forwards slaying all the enemies in our way and slowly working our way towards her. Finally, we're able to deliver the finishing blow and we're rewarded with the Lucidity spell. 
Now we can finish up our time with the inverted carry and study hall by dropping off the edge here and then carefully making our way along these beams. Should you wish, there's a few items here that you can grab as well, but we're basically aiming for the lift just below us right in the center. So drop down and activate the lift when you're ready. This will take you all the way to the top, top, top bottom, top, top bottom. <laughs> and you can then open up upside down door and you'll now be outside on a big ass bridge leading you towards the divine tower. Make sure you grab the sight of grace and as you get about halfway down this bridge, you'll be invaded by a godskin noble. He really is not to be underestimated. All the godskin enemies in this game are so powerful and he is no exception. However, once you finally take him down, you'll be rewarded with the whole Godskin Noble armor set. Now we can run to the other end of this bridge, push through the double doors, work our way all the way to the top of the tower as usual, and we'll be able to loot the Curse Mark of Death, which is the key item we were here for, but also the Stargazer Heirloom, which is a talisman that gives you plus five to intelligence, so not a bad reward. Now we'll head back to Rani's Rise and give her the good news. When we get back here and work our way up to her chamber, she's actually no longer here. There is a sight of grace in her place. I'm a poet and I wasn't even aware. <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so head back down and we're now going to go to the third and final rise in this area, which is Renna's Rise to the north. This was previously inaccessible, but what we've done so far has opened it up. Up this ladder, carefully walk around the edge, and you can grab the Snow Witch armor set. And who doesn't want to cosplay as Rani? Very awesome armor set. Now, right at the top of the rise, head through the portal, and you'll be in Ainsel River Main. Pretty much directly in front of you, you can loot the miniature Rani. A doll resembling Rani the Witch. From head to toe, every detail is perfect. This unresponsive doll seems pleasantly cool. Now what you want to do is rest at a sight of grace and keep pestering her until she finally submits and agrees to talk to you. And she asks you to eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. So that is what we'll go and do now. We've now got an incredibly long journey through Ainsel River and through Noxtella. Again, I'm going to skip most of it because I've already covered it during the Things You Miss series. But essentially, all you need to do when you get to Noxtella is just keep running west all the way through the entire area. And then when you get right to the end here, head down the lift. You may as well light the Noxtella waterfall base in sight of grace, just in case as a little checkpoint. And also, there's some very cool lore that you can learn by speaking to Rani here as well. Once you've exhausted her dialogue, we'll carry on through these tunnels, through all of the basilisks, and will be faced with a baleful shadow. Now, yet another very challenging fight ensues. You'll see that the baleful shadow resembles Blythe the half-wolf, though they aren't the same person. The baleful shadow is just another wolf-like assassin of the Two Fingers, wearing the same armor set and wielding the same greatsword. However, his sword is imbued with destined death, not the frost enchantment of Blythe's sword which further indicates the Shadow's allegiance to the Two Fingers rather than Rani. Once you manage to take him down, you'll get the discarded palace key. Before we leave this area, continue progressing forwards down the next lift and light the Lake of Rot Sight of Grace. We're going to come back here later so it'll make things a lot easier for you. Now teleport to Renala and you can use the discarded palace key on the chest in her room just here. And that will reward you with the Dark Moon Ring, which is exactly what we'll be needing to wrap up Rani's questline. Now that we've grabbed that, I'll meet you back at the Lake of Rot for the next part of the video. Okay, I lied. I did the Lake of Rot off camera, and you meet me here now in Astel's boss room. If you want to know everything you need to do in the Lake of Rot and how to get here, go and check out that video. But you've probably already done it by now, which is why I didn't want to bore you with it yet again. So once you've gone through the Lake of Rot and the Grand Cloister and you've defeated Astel, you can head north out of his arena and this cavern will only be accessible if you've been progressing Rani's questline. Otherwise, this will be sealed off to you. But now we can head all the way up this lift and just out of these doors, you'll be in the Moonlight Altar. And this is the one and only way to get to this area of the game. 
making it, in my opinion, the most secret and the most rare area in the game. So I'll be covering all of the juicy loot in this area during the final part of the Things You Miss series coming very soon. Now that we're here, just keep heading north into the ruined structure you can see off in the distance. Sprint past Glintstone Dragon Ajula. She is an absolute god. Even at really high levels, she packs a punch. So run past her, loot all the Starlight Shards, grab the Sight of Grace and rest up to despawn her. We don't want to have to deal with her for now. Once you've had your fun with this building, come over here to the hole in the floor and start very carefully dropping down. Once you get to the bottom, follow the only route you can through these tunnels and you'll meet a motionless and blood-soaked Rani, having absolutely mutilated these two fingers. Put the ring on, and once this cutscene is played out, she will appear by your side, looking exactly as we're used to seeing her. And that's it, you've now unlocked Rani's ending when you finish the game. Wait for a few seconds when she disappears, and you can also grab the Dark Moon Greatsword, which has a super badass Ash of War, the Moonlight Greatsword and of course is incredibly reminiscent of the Moonlight Greatsword from the Dark Souls series. Don't go yet though, because there's one more thing we can do to completely wrap up her questline. So I'll meet you back at Rani's chamber. So now we're back at Rani's Rise, we have one final thing to do. Head back down to the entrance and you'll hear Blythe talking to himself. He will become hostile once he finishes talking and unfortunately you do need to kill him. He's one of my favourite NPCs, and this fight was heartbreaking. Also, he is an absolute machine. This can be a very tough fight. When you do defeat him, you'll be rewarded with his armour set and the Royal Greatsword. Now I'm going to head to Celevis' Rise and show you on the broken wall behind his tower is where you can also grab the helm for Blythe's armour set. And now with that, we do have Blythe's full armour set along with lots of other incredibly awesome rewards, as we have now completed Rani's questline. And with that, all I have left to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.